Damn, do I focus? Okay, that's good. Great. Hey everyone. Ah, Mr. Hook, you are here. Thank you very much. I wasn't sure whether Jim would still be awake for this because it is rather late where he is. I mean, it's late enough where I am. It's past midnight. So we've already had Halloween come and gone. Plenty of trick-or-treating and in my case, I guess it was a bit of a treat. So, anyway, the um, Jim has sent along a camera that he found doing whatever he was doing and we weren't sure you know how useful it was going to be but you know i'm always complaining about the overhead camera and it sort of like just doesn't quite have that reach to get where i want to get so jim solved that up here we go we go to the overhead it looks like you know standard camera nothing out of the ordinary here but i haven't got the remote with me but uh let's see here we go here we go, we can get nice overhead view without, you know, having to go to the microscope. So there you go, it um, all seems to be good. Pretty happy with that. I haven't got, there is a little remote control to it, so I'll have to try that out later. But for now, probably the only thing I will need to do is actually mount this up higher because the field of view, what do we got here? Yeah, it's not exactly a very big field of view at its current height, so I kind of need to probably go up another another 300 mil or so, and then just zoom it in a little more. So um, the zoom can go much further, but I think the focus limit is the problem. Let's see how we go. Oh yeah, it's actually getting that, and that's probably about. That's not bad, you know. You could almost solder with that. It is off angle slightly, intentionally, but the autofocus seems to be pretty good. Yeah, it definitely has its limits, but I think realistically, yeah, right. That's fully zoomed out. Yeah, it's almost, um, um, almost perfect. It's uh, off-centered a little bit because that's where I used to have the 922 camera, which is just a little off to my left. Uh, if I may be able to rig up something so it's directly above, but in some ways it's useful to have a slightly angled off view because otherwise you can miss out on certain details that I'm working on. Uh, let's see if I can fiddle with the brightness and stuff. Hopefully I don't mess things up. Try to give a bit more life. Certainly, the clarity is much better, and this is going through another one of those HDMI adapters. So now I've got two HDMI adapters running on this machine. The poor thing has got more USB ports on it than a MacBook. Let's see, JVC. Yeah, it's a um, dual SD card at that too. I just realised that I can turn the Although it's upside down for me. <laughs> oh well. I don't know the exact model number, but it's got a 20 times zoom, optical zoom, full HD, CMOS sensor, which is nice. Um, it was a little bit of fun and games to get it to work. It has to use a micro or small HDMI port through to a normal one. But the harder part was actually working out how to turn off all the on screen display data because. When you plug it in, it by default shows you all the stuff that's on the little uh, control panel, which you obviously don't want. Anyway, what's this? Maybe remove reflective back. What? Yeah. Anyway, so I'm I'm really happy with that. Certainly, the quality, the color saturation seems to be a lot better. I don't know whether that's simply because it's going through the HDMI adapter. But, um, I mean, there's some blur, but I mean, what do you expect? 30 frames per second, you can't have everything. That's pretty damn good. 
But the nice thing is, you know, I'll be able to finally zoom in on when I'm doing fine work, but I don't want to use the microscope. So they work out as a nice little addition. Jim, it's a um, it's a mini HDMI, so it's probably around about two thirds the size. Fortunately, it's a standard port, and fortunately, some time ago I bought up a whole bunch of different adapter cables, and I was lucky enough that uh, I had one of these ones. Yeah, we'll stick this machine together and see how it goes. This is what's this one? We worked on this last night, I think, or the night before. Oh, this is the one that um, had liquid damage, it was in the daughter's backpack or something like that. It's been ultrasonic, and as a consequence I don't even know the work I did. Uh, I should be happy about that. You know you've done a decent job when you look at a board and you're not even sure where you did the work. Hey, pan off. To my image. Just the back, maybe dropping aperture. Mm, still not really. I don't know. Where is my paste? All I know is I've turned it on, fiddled with the settings, got the OSD off it, and got it working with my system. That is about the limit of my involvement so far. T6, I want my T5. Fortunately, no trick-or-treaters. We kept the light off. We didn't want them gallivanting through our yard. And around here, we're on the very outskirts of the city, the town, whatever you want to call it. So if you get people out here, more often than not, if they're going to bring you anything, it's going to be a cake made out of dog doo-doo and knives. Yeah, I saw that Sean Connery passed away. There's going to be a lot of very upset ladies in the world. Yeah, I'm not real sure what the model is. I have to have a look later. But it's a JVC. It's a CMOS sensor. So, you know, it's a good quality unit by the looks of it. And the... There is a little bit of encoding, like it doesn't, at the same time it could be just OBS playing up to. Is the JSO2 worth it? Um, tough call. I kind of have stopped using the JSO2 since I got the uh, micro pencil and I've just got a chisel tip on the other ones. Every now and then I do bring out the JSO2 still, but overall, I think because of having the micro pencil, it kind of does away with that need for the one tip to handle both broad and fine. Yeah, definitely the color slightly lower resolution. I'd be quite surprised on that. I would have maybe... I can see the encoding and it may be an encoding issue with the HDMI adapter. I've got the resolution. It is a full 1080 supposedly. Just trying to see. There seems to be like a fixed layer on there. A fuzz. I don't know. Hey, Baron Ember. Uh, but the fact that I can get the zoom in on it is what is a real win. It's like 720, eh? Let me check the settings. Or maybe there's something I botched up. 
full 1920-1080, 30 frames per second, color range is partial, YUV 12. Now I can't really, I can't fault the settings in this one, I'm sorry. I wouldn't personally call that 720. Or maybe, it, I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. I'd be surprised if there's encoding artifacts on the basis of the fact that it's the same encoder model as the previous one that I've got. The writing on YouTube is blurred. Which writing? Like the writing just here, that doesn't show up blurred here. It's definitely 1080. I'm just going to swing it over to another screen and have a look. Mm. It seems noisy. I think it might actually be a light limitation. There might be a light problem. Let me just see if I can... Okay, I'm going to fiddle with the menu and see if I can improve the light. Yep, it's all upside down for me. Oh, that's a really useless light. Guess we won't use that anymore. Makes the arm crack up a bit. The video quality is set at UXP. Goodness knows what that is. Well, I can only imagine that's ultra extended, whatever. I could try to set it just to XP. Made no difference. Well, this scenes recorded in this mode cannot be backed up to DVD. Yeah, no one cares. No. Yeah. Blame the encoder. That's funny because the encoder is the same one that's used for the microscope. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And I'm fairly sure they're both the same. Full screen there does, but yeah, there does seem to be some kind of a fuzziness. Trash in my hair.
The only thing I've got is that it's just a Marco Silicon UVC one device. That's it. Interestingly, they're not clashing with each other, which is quite a rare thing. All right, well, we'll just um, persist with it. I'll do some better examination tomorrow. And sort of get a... I'll record it. Maybe it's doing it because it's not recording at this point. See, at the moment, I've just simply got it on... Um, uh, whatever. It's just displaying passively, as it were. And it's not actually running a record session at the moment. So maybe it won't go into high quality until I make it record. That's the only sort of theory I've got left at the moment. And yeah, uh, it's all gone all dark on me again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Oh well, fiddle around, but it could be a light limitation. It could be an encoding problem. It could be the fact that I've got two of them. I guess I've got a lot of things to work out. So at this point, I have got uh, a very nice zoom facility, but we still need to work out what's going on with the quality there. Which is a bit of a shame, because yeah, it should be full 1080 out of there. Of course, sometimes they generate a 1080 signal, but they only populate it with a 720 data. Yeah, Luke Davis, now that would be a good way to start your day, complaining about something that's your own fault. Well, Greg, it's the same adapter as the other one, the one that we use for the microscope. So the microscope seems to be just fine. And I didn't put... Damn it. I take these screws out. I didn't put the Wi-Fi cable in. It shouldn't matter if it's recording. At least I wouldn't have thought it would matter, but then again, who knows? Yeah, maybe at this point, all it's doing is generating a signal for the display and not... because like the little LCD display that's on the top here. Maybe all it's doing is just for that and it's not actually generating it for the proper recording. Well, not sure why this doesn't want to sit back in its channeling. Uh, I wish I could blame YouTube, except this time I can see it myself. So it's a little hard to blame YouTube on this one. Then again, the way my discussions have been going recently about certain things, it seems like it doesn't matter whether 
you can or can't blame something, you just blame it anyway. Oh, and the Wi-Fi all sorted itself just out fine. So the person came and picked that up today. I'm not very happy to have it working again. Well, I guess I'll try tomorrow in the daylight. And I'll even try it with the microscope one removed. In fact, I could probably do that now. It's not really going to affect much. We'll just disconnect the microscope and see what happens. I might have to actually drop out OBS and come back in. Well, I know what I can do. I'll actually flip it around. I'll take the cable that's coming out of this camera and put it into where the microscope is going because we know that the microscope one does a good job. Okay, let's see if Paul can botch up everything. It could also be a bad cable. That's the other possibility. Okay, it's plugged into the microscope port now. So we can just get a microscope. Okay, the microscope doesn't have the automatic reversal on it, but it kind of looks much the same. Yeah, that looks much the same, don't you agree? So it's either the cable, or it's the fact that we're not recording, or it's, I don't know, worse, that's fantastic. It could be just a shonky cable, but then usually you see it presenting differently if it's a shonky cable. I'll just do the microscope. Ah, now we've upset the microscope. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, it certainly is a process of elimination, agreed. Come on. There we go. Alright, so this is microscope. I've unfortunately messed with the parameters slightly, so I'm going to have to bring those back. I don't know. It's It does look like it is a coaxial braided one, yeah. Okay. The microscope's a little bit bright there. Ooh, too much contrast or something. Too much set, I don't know. Yeah, that looks healthy. Yeah. So you should be able to see the dimples on that. Okay, there's definitely too much colour saturation going on there. the hues off. That's more like it. Yep. If you got those Wero drivers, you um, not Wero, Weha drivers, you'll know that colour was about right then. Uh, so the quality out of the microscope is good. Yeah. And the overhead I don't know if I've got an SD card I can use and pop in there and see if I can make it play ball.
Got 32 gig card. Let's see if we can put this in. What? Need to pull my SD card. All data will be lost. Oh no. You know, I'm probably going to regret this, but... Need to pull my card. I thought I said yes. Oh, I see what it's doing now. Oh, full mount error. Right. Fair enough. Wants to play difficult, huh? Uh, two can play at that game. Amazing how difficult it can be to do things in a hurry. Ah, there you are. Alright, so we've got an SD reader and we need a USB-C port, which I'm almost certain I have on this. Oh god, something's using it. Ah, yes. Okay. I'd imagine this probably wants FAT32 or something. What the? I've changed this. What do you bastards do with my... They have changed all the... Well, we'll go to... cheat, do it the lazy way, use someone's GUI tool. Okay, it's uncarly. I sure hope I'm re deleting the right thing. As in the right media, close. Okay. That thirty two. No, my wallpaper is not XP Bliss. My wallpaper is some cool aircraft. What the hell is this doing a... You're supposed to do a quick format, you annoying prat. No, nah, it's not. They're not model aircraft. They're actual legit aircraft. Yeah, they're full-size ones. I 
I mean, I can understand why you thought it was the XP background. It does look like it. Yeah, I'm not a great fan of the GUIs, but I gotta admit, I kind of wasn't in the mood to stuff around. Normally, I just go into F Disk and delete all the petitions and create a new one, but it seems they've replaced F Disk that I'm used to with something new now, which is rather annoying, I must say. Okay, that's out. Let's see, we got overhead again. Put into slot A. Okay, so slot A is good for record. Insert card to slot B. I, what? Why would I want to put anything in B? It's got two slots, I'm not sure why. Oh, here we go. Need to format slot A. Oh, really? Again? Don't know why it's suffering an error. Um, personally, I'm much more of a text terminal type person. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's giving an error. Uh, I know why. No, what? I have no idea how Linux managed to format then, because apparently the lock was active. Yeah, the lock was active, which really doesn't make a lot of sense, because that's a physical lock. Try it again. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that must have been it. Yeah, it seems like it was the software in this one. Alright, let's try for the record. Now, I, really don't, I don't understand what it's doing here. I'll try to put it in slot B. Okay, slot B it's happier with. It's recording. And it would appear that things haven't changed. I think the shiny surface is blurring things. Uh, don't think so. I mean, it may mess up with the focus a little bit, but not that much. Yeah, it, uh, the um, camera hold is a little bit off. Oh well. Yeah, that's right, Jimbo. Oh well, we'll just carry on as we were. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know why. Does it show what f-stop it's at? Uh, let's see. Nope. <laughs> Does not. It just says it's recording at UXP. I'll tell you what I'll try to do is I'll stop it and play back and see if that does anything. Okay, so it's stopped. I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to play back. Here we go, play record.
So this is actually a playback. Does it look any better? So obviously I'm not, so I've got magic, I've got four hands. <laughs> Anyone have a verdict? It doesn't look any different? Hmm, okay. Same, same. Okay, well at least, you know, we've, we've solved that. I'm gonna have to fix up the mounting on that. There's plenty of things to solve. Alright, so we know it's not the recording, we know it's not the adapter. I can't test the cable though, because I don't have another HDMI to HDMI mini adapter cable. It's a direct cable, it's not a, like a dongle on the end of it or anything like that. So I'm really not sure why the output, or why the recording quality is like that. Take the SD and play it directly on your PC. Well, there's a good idea. Hopefully it'll be in a format that we can understand. Unable to read petition table. They use a custom format. Bastards. Why would they do that? I guess what they're doing is instead of wasting space on petition tables and stuff like that, they just dump data pretty much directly. Yeah, I can't read the petition table on that. Hilarious. Oh well. Let's just get this finished. And we'll try again tomorrow in better daylight. And see if it is a, a light limitation. Copy via USB. No, I can't. That's the trouble is I'm reading it through my reader and if Linux says that it doesn't recognize the petition table then you know for sure that they've really done something to it because Linux will pretty much you got your best chance of reading something with it and if it says nay then it's probably nay Yeah, it could be a direct disc, no petition table at all. I'll see if I can mount it directly, but normally it doesn't come up reporting like that. But, then again, F disk was different, so who knows. I'll just try and mount it in a second. Just do a direct mount. Pseudo mount device SDC. Data. No, wrong file system type, bad option, bad super block, missing code page or helper. No. So it's not that either. Bit of a shame, that was actually a perfectly valid and viable possibility. In this case, I don't think anyone's really going to bother to decode it. Ow, oh, that... the brightness level is just... so bad. We'll put these flexes in, we'll put the battery back in and it might auto... auto brightness back down. Or up, rather. That's a bit better. No, it's not using EXFAT. Linux knows EXFAT. It doesn't even have a petition table in there at all. And if it was EXFAT, then they would have detected it when I tried to mount the drive itself directly. 
Okay, we're a screw down. That's no good. Yeah, we're definitely a screw down. Hey, Sima. Uh, the brightness before was... It's automatically reacting too much to the reflective aluminium of when I take this away. That. See, it brings itself back down, dims things up. So... I think the light angle reflects too much into the lens. Well, that's possible too. Yeah. Damn it. I think I've jammed the cable a little bit. The camera cable is sometimes it just sort of doesn't get out of the way and you end up crushing the fan on top of it. And so you just got to instead, come on, Paul, slide your fan in on the side just like that. What the? Did I just? Yep. Wrong one. Wrong hole. And we need. I don't know where that other screw's gone. I don't know whether I lost it or what. And I need my fourteen sixty six container. Lewis experimented with polarized, circular polarized filters. I don't know if he's still got it or not. They definitely do help reducing the glare and things like that. But of course there is the fairly significant light penalty that you do take. And of course it's yet another optical element to go through. In Lewis's case it's not so bad because he already he doesn't have a Barlow or anything on his that I'm aware of, so he's already well ahead of us in that. David, thank you. Delaware Lurker. Oh, right. Okay, so this was the other concern that I completely didn't check out. Damn. All right, we actually do have to do something about that. For two reasons. One, it's got flux on it. The second one, that connector is actually... Yeah. It's marginal. It will kind of work, but it's probably not a good idea. So I would say the ideal thing would be is to actually have that replaced. Which is going to be fun because I've just put the machine back together. <laughs> That's okay. Fortunately, you don't have to take the board out to do this particular replacement, but you do have to take the screen off the back of the machine, off the chassis. But yeah, you can insert that and you can get away with it, but sooner or later something's going to go wrong and it'll drift in the wrong lane and you'll short the drive, the, um, the backlight output, you'll short it down to ground and you'll have a whole bunch of new problems. So yeah, I'm going to have to, unfortunately, tell the person that we're going to need new screen code which means another 1466 that we're doing a screen split on but that won't be tonight it may be another night Rodrigo yeah the polarizer was just on the microscope itself instead of a barlow he had a circular polarizer on the microscope yeah. So yeah, we don't really have an answer yet to this particular mystery. A bit of a shame. Because I mean, it's just brilliant how I can you know, do the telephoto in, get a good look at those parts. So when you look at it like that, you can't... That almost feels 1080-ish, but I don't know. 
on your screens does it show up? Yes, Catherine, it's uh, rather damaged instead. Oh, right, okay, Rodrigo, yeah, no. Just with the microscope one in this case. Okay, glad we're both on the same page again. So, uh, yeah, so what's your opinion? Does this feel like 720 or is it... It's hard to say. No, if it was 1080i, I'd really notice it because, you, you know, the interlacing is terrible. And it is supposed to be 1080p. A suit of suity, sorry. I guess I'll just be doing more experimenting tomorrow. I did change the settings in OBS, but I didn't change in between when I did that recording and now. We should use our we are red to determine so like that we are red that coloring is actually pretty damn perfect so i don't think saturation and anything like the hue needs to be changed brightness is slightly above neutral contrast is a little more than neutral ladders on the edge that would probably be the encoding module i would say they're taking shortcuts somewhere okay so that's neutral contrast this will be neutral brightness but it seems a little dark but it is readable saturation is way over the top so I would say that's undersaturated at that point. That would be about where I'd set it. I don't have a gamma setting on this. Let's see, I never understand what the difference between. Well, I haven't looked up the difference between YV versus YU12. Let's see, BGR. That looks a little weaker. Let's emulate it anyway. This is full color and it should have killed the frame rate, I'm guessing. Yep, kills the frame rate. 422 just decimates your data capacity. Default color range. So full. That's it. Uh, I don't have any other settings on this. It seems very clear there, but then when I zoom out, I seem to we seem to lose it. It becomes icky. There's definitely a lens issue out here. Let's put some more colorful items. At least the autofocus seems to be pretty good. There is no buffer involved. Yeah, Christian, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little bit. Most of the time that people don't really take notice of the very edges of their shots. So what I can probably do is I have plans for this area up here this area up here I have plans to kind of block it all in with text and so I can sort of kill it away is the lens dirty no it doesn't look it not that that means anything but it is automatically kept behind a shield so I'd be very surprised if it was dirty I don't have a suitable torch to have a look at it or rather I don't have a suitable light source to reflect off it to have a look And try a dirty old iPhone light. Nah, that thing looks 
That thing looks clear like water. Definitely no problems on the lens. Artin. Lewis doesn't know about colour. He only knows about the reduced bandwidth colour. Hey, Sam, what is it? Basoglu? Basoglu? Oh, well. Put the Mac backplate on the desk. Okay. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, you want to be able to read the data off that. And immediately we suffer a rather extensive amount of loss of information. The automatic color, exp uh, the automatic brightness is a bit of a problem. Swift silver, that's not a good thing. I mean, it happens a fair bit to kids, but uh, if you're an adult and that starts happening, uh, I think the problem is just lack of light, not so much the white balance. But I'm not sure I can even turn off. So really, the only thing I've got is gain. This is color. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, oh, Vladimir, I'll give it a shot. I really need to buy a new set of lights, I'd say. New set of lights and I should be... Okay. Fuzzy is not on the user interface. That's a good point, Martin. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, just something to experiment with. There's nothing to say that I actually can't run the existing camera that I had, the um, Logitech, in this position, and then use this camera in an, uh, another angle, specifically for the purpose of zooming in. Hit the off button. You sure about that, Barry? Or should I hit the um, Control Alt F4 or Alt F4 for enhanced facilities? More diffused ones. Now these are, this is a broad, uh, it already is fairly diffuse, this particular one. Tim Howard, thank you. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying good job for though, but uh, anyway. Anyway, it's a, you know, something to experiment with. It's definitely, you know, the optics are good in the sense of the zoom is certainly spectacular. I mean, you can't. I mean, you can't argue with that. That looks brilliant. You, know, you could pretty much actually do work with that sort of level of zoom. Update camera firmware. I'm not sure I'd be game to do that, in all honesty. Hey, Malcolm Richards. A long-time lurker. And check the HDMI cable version. Well, the HDMI cable, it... Yeah, I don't know exactly which one it is. But I only just recently bought it. Uh, anyway. What happens it mean if the MagSafe LED is dim? Uh, I keep forgetting about that. There's a couple of per couple of ways that can be happening. Uh, certainly problems on your one wire. I actually had a pilot write up my aircraft for an instrument not working in the OFF selection. Are you kidding? Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, Rodrigo, that's that's exactly right. I, you know, some things I'm happy to upgrade firmware with, but with things like this, more often than not, I think it's probably going to brick the device. <laughs> uh, the workshop refit, nothing's happening at the moment because I still don't actually own the place. 
I am working on that. We just hit another financial milestone today. We also had, just realised, we've probably hit 25,000 subs now. Checking, checking, checking. Yes, 25,005. Well, marvellous. Absolutely marvellous celebration that we're not going to do anything about. Anyway, I am going to head off, finish my night. And I'm going to have to message this person and let them know that, yes, indeed, we really should change this cable. Let's do it, go back to wide. Because it would be a little bit irresponsible to, you know, uh, not fix up that cable. Definitely I can see that, you know, on these edges here, from particularly around here, it gets fuzzy. And yeah. We'll work on it later. Anyway. Thank you all for dropping in. It wasn't really meant to be a repair thing or anything like that. It was just a case of trying out the camera and letting Jim know that I got it and that I've been playing with it. And maybe tomorrow we can do some real work. In the meantime, you all take care and I will catch you all later. Catch us.